It says, Ober von dem Bein von Wiesen Guts und Schlecht von ihm sollst du nicht essen, warum in dem Tag, wo du es von ihm wirst du sicher starben. That word starben is a scary word because from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, from it you shall not eat because in the day that you eat of it, you will surely starve and you will surely die. And this is a uh, important warning here that uh, we can't live outside the word. We cannot live. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. It is what's keeping you from dying, the word of God. As a newborn babe, you know, alive in, in Moshiach ben David, you are to crave the pure milk of the word of God. And you have to guard your heart above all else. And thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And you, you must... Keep in mind that the word of God is what you must you must stand guard over. You know, the first man was given a garden and he was told to guard it and keep it. And uh, put a put a watch over it. And that didn't mean, you know, just uh, put a scarecrow up there and uh, go fishing. No. He had to till it. He had to cultivate it. Because even though in the beginning no plant had sprouted up, had sprung up, uh, when, uh, when the garden did, did come, when God did uh, make the garden, he placed a man in it and he did it for a reason to guard, to guard, to guard the, the, uh, the, the, the garden, to, to keep a watch over it, to till it, to, cu to cultivate it. Uh, and that's what we have to do. Uh, uh, we have to guard our heart. And uh, above all else, above all else, God guard your heart. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. And the, uh, the reason that we, we study the Bible is we get a word from God. For instance, and God said to Noah, the end of all flesh is come uh, before me for the earth is full of injustice by them and uh, behold I bring down them I bring them down with the earth he's going to bring the earth down he's going to bring the people on the earth down and everything on it everything that creeps everything every animal every bird every insect I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it down, he's saying. But then, if you look carefully, uh, and this is important because uh, he gives a commandment to Noah. He says, and behold, you, and it's you singular. He's not talking to a group of people. He's not talking to the wife and the three sons and their wives, etc. He's not talking to the family. He's talking to Noah himself. And he's saying, you are to make an ark. And then he tells him the dimensions of it and how to make it and everything else. 
But the point that I'm trying to make here is God has something for you to do. You. You singular. And you won't know what it is unless you keep the no the nose in the Bible. And, and, you know, my nose has been in the Bible since 1971. And the Lord gave me this uh, word in Yiddish, in Genesis 2, 5. It's all about springing up. Genesis 2, 16 and 17, not living outside the word. And uh, the the death penalty of doing that and then above all guard your heart proverbs 313 and proverbs 423 but but genesis 2 5 very important no plant had sprung up that word sp sprung up is extremely important you wouldn't know it unless you really looked at it in the hebrew because the Moshiach is going to spring up. Uh, the 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 Shoresh Ishai, the root of Jesse, Isaiah 11.10, is going to spring up, Isaiah 53.2, out of dry land, dry ground. Suddenly, he's going to spring up. Suddenly, he's going to go to his his Hegel, his to the Beis Hamikdash. Suddenly, he's going to appear and do his work for our redemption and stand up alive, and his body will not see Shahat. This is all going to happen, but his appearance will be like a plant springing up or sprouting from the soil. It will be sudden. And you get that that word, that all important word, even starting as early as Genesis 2 5. And why is this important? Because when Zechariah comes up to Yeshua ben Yehutzadak, the Kohen Gadol of the post exilic Kohen Gadol, coming back from the Babylonian exile to rebuild the Beis Hamikdash temple in Jerusalem. <laughs> Excuse me, what does he do? He says, Hine ish, behold, the man. Zemach is his name, and that is a veiled allusion to the Messiah, the Shoresh Yishai, the root springing up out of dry ground. Isaiah. 11.10, Isaiah 53.2. This is a code word for Moshiach. When, there, when there's another king, like Cyrus or somebody, you can't talk about the Melech HaMoshiach king, the Messiah king. You can't talk about him, so you have to use a code word. You have to use veiled language. And the way that the prophets... The post-exilic prophets refer to him is with the word Zemach, which you get all the way back in the Torah, all the way back at the beginning of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 5. No plant had sprung up. And, of course, when they did spring up, the first man had to watch over that garden. That was his job. And there were many trees in the garden, but there was one tree not to eat of. And that's the tree of moral autonomy where you don't need the Bible. You have the Quran, you have the uh, writings of, of, uh, Islam, of Islam or Hinduism or, or Buddhism or philosophy or whatever. So you don't need the word of God, you think. But you find out that on the day you make that decision, uh, and of course, all you all humanity has fallen. We are we all have a propensity towards sin. We are fallen creatures with inborn 
inherited sin. And that's why we have to be born again. But when the Lord showed me that there was something I had to do, if you go to uh, Google and you just Google my name, you'll come to our bio page and you'll see all those books. But they're really all uh, going in one basic direction, and that is the Bible, translating the Bible. And right now, and for the last couple of days, I've been translating the Yiddish Tanakh into an interlinear. And I'm doing that because the Lord has wanted me to build an ark. See, the Bible is an ark. When you find the word of God, remember what Jeremiah said, thy words were found and I did eat them. They tasted sweet. They satisfied. The word of God is the joy and rejoicing of my heart. It's, it's salvation to find the word of God. As a, as a newborn babe, to crave the pure milk of the word of God and to find that milk, it is sweet. It satisfies. And, of course, if you will... Hold on to instruction and not let it go. If you guard it well, like the first man was told to guard the, the garden, it is your life. Mishle, chapter 4, verse 13. Uh, Proverbs 4, 13. It's your life. You have to hold on to it. Don't let it go. Guard it well. Well, what happened was there was an intruder that came into the garden. Hasatan, using the guise of a serpent. Notice he doesn't talk to the man. He's too subtle, too crafty for that. He wants to work through the serpent and then through the wife to get the man of God to do the very thing that promises spiritual death. The very thing he must not do. The very thing he was warned about. The very thing that it talks about in Genesis 2.17. Ober fun dem boim fun wiesen guts un schlecks. However, from this, from the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, fun im zolstu nicht essen, from it you shall not eat. Vorum in dem tog vos du es fun im. For in the day that you eat from it, vestu zikr starben, you will surely, surely die. If you go the way of moral autonomy and throw the Bible aside, I don't care what the Bible says. It says don't get a tattoo. I'm going to the tattoo parlor. It says, do not fornicate. Well, I'm going to move in with my girlfriend. It says all kinds of stuff. I don't care what it says. I don't read it. I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in reading it. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to go my own way. All we like sheep have gone our own way. We've all turned our own way. And that's why the Lord had to lay on him the iniquity of us all. He sent the word. He sent his word and healed us. Uh, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Uh, what is, who threw the stars in the sky? What is his name? What is his son's name? God has a son. Hashem has the Zunfundroidister, the word of God, who was with him at his side, according to Proverbs chapter 8. And I thank God not only for Proverbs chapter 4, but for Proverbs chapter 8. Because 
it does say, uh, I was appointed from eternity from the beginning before the world began. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work before his deeds of old. The Lord possesses the heaven and, and the earth and he's a because he owns it, he's able to give Abraham the land of Israel. And the Lord possessed his word and the word was the craftsman at his side and he was his son and this wisdom was used to create the world. And what is his name and what is his son's name, if you can tell? And we can tell because we know the Zemach. It says, Hine ish Zemach Shemo. Well, Shemo, who, who's, what's his name? His name is Yeshua. Yeshua ben Yehoshadak. The Kohen Gadol the, uh, of Zechariah 6, the post exilic Kohen Gadol, his name is Yeshua. Ezra 3 uh, 3 8, Zechariah 3 8, Zechariah 6 11 and 12. His name is Yeshua or Yahushua, same word, Ben Yehutzadak. And because we know his name, Yeshua, we know that he is the Tzemach, the Messiah. Now, there it is. How can God be even more clear than that? He actually tells you the name, the personal name of the Messiah. Now, let me ask you, do you know any other Yeshua's other than Yeshua ben Dovid who are the Messiah? David called him Lord. Isaiah called him God. Uh, Malachi called him God. Daniel calls him God. The word Palak means to serve as God, to serve, to worship as God. They won't do that. The friends of Daniel won't do that to the idols of Nebuchadnezzar, but all peoples will do that with the bar and ocean on the glory clouds. And all power has been given to him, all authority. He will judge the world. This is the one we have to deal with. This is the one who loves us and gave his life for us, the, the, the just for the unjust, to bring us to Hashem, the Zunfundereubishter. And so... God wanted me to have a Bible translation where all of this is clear. And if you go to afii.org forward slash capital O, capital J, capital B dot PDF, you will see a Bible where these keywords are transliterated in the text so that you can see the word Palak and Daniel when you read it. And and get the deity of the Messiah, of Daniel's Messiah, that uh, Rashi tells us the Barinosh is the Messiah, the, the Melech HaMoshiach. So the Lord had this ark that he wanted me to build. And it's taken all these years. I started in 1971. This is now 2024. And I'm just now doing the interlinear of the Yiddish Tanakh. And right now I'm up to Voracious chapter seven. And the Lord is helping me and he's speeding me up. He's giving me the best software, the best, the best translation consultants, the best software engineer to help me. And even though Linda and I are very weak, we were on a Zoom today dealing with polycystic kidney disease and and the heart related things uh, from that uh, kidney failure problem and all the all the things that can hit you uh, your your heart valve your hernia your all the all the the things that that come 
And you see, we couldn't be any weaker. But God is strong. He is sustaining us. We are actually getting the job done, weak as we are, by the mercy of God, by the grace of God. And that's the thing about Noah. Remember, he found unmerited favor with God. The people at that time, their, all their thoughts were only evil all the time. And God even regretted that he had uh, made man. Because man fell from that first taste of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil all the way to the time of the flood. Man had fallen. And look at our country. We started out with Puritans coming over here. And they wanted just one thing. They wanted to worship God without having some monarch breathe down their neck and throw them in prison or burn them at the stake or burn their Bible. That's, that's, that's the kind of people that came over here. I'm talking about my great, 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 great grandfather, a Puritan named, named Thomas Goble, who came over here and settled in the Boston area and became a member of his congregation and uh, I thank God for his Puritan faith and for that heritage that I have. And that's how this country was started, with people with that kind of, of connection to God. But now look at the United States. You don't see very many Puritans walking around New York. You see people with tattoos, smoking pot, walking down the street with their whole body like a sketchboard arms, legs, neck, face, chest, everything, tattoos. And what are they smoking? Marijuana, legalized marijuana. And where are they going? Home to the apartment where they live in with their girlfriend, whom they are not going to marry. And when you try to talk to them about the Lord, uh, they they blow you off. They're really They're really not that innocent. Uh, you see, there, this is what had happened. But Noah found unmerited favor. He found grace in the eyes of God. And then he was given something to do. He says, behold, you singular. I'm talking to you, Noah. You have a job to do. You have to make this ark, and I'm going to tell you how to make it. And you know what? I'm telling you, all the Noahs who are out there, every Noah who's listening to this message, I'm telling you that you have something to do. Before you leave this world, God has orders, holy commands, orders for you, you singular. Go back and look at Genesis 6.15 and you will see it. You singular. See, you are to make an ark. That's something that God is entrusting to him. Now, the first man was entrusted with one garden to keep watch over it. Keep the snakes out. Keep the snakes away from your wife. Obey God. The Etz Hayim is in that garden, the tree of life. And you, you, what, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to keep the snakes out. And your wife is supposed to respect you. And the two of you have been given something to do. Noah was told, build an ark, but the first man was told, you guard the garden. You keep the garden. You watch over the garden. You guard the garden. And what we have to do, you and I, 
we have to guard our heart. With there, where there is no vision, the people perish. Chapter 29, verse 18. There's a vision. God gave me a vision. Uh, and I've got to fulfill that vision. If you want to know what the vision is, go to afii.org forward slash capital B-I-O dot H-T-M-L. And you will see, starting in 1971 and going all the way up to 2024, the Lord's vision was in front of me. Without the vision, I would have perished. But I knew I had something I had to do for God. I was given an order. You do this for me. I'm talking to you, singular. You, Phil Goebel. And God is talking to you, singular. You, the listener, whoever you are. He's got something for you to do. If you put your nose in the Bible and follow the Lord closely, if you're in a congregation where the Bible is believed and faithfully taught, if you are being discipled, if you are obeying the word, he will show you. And this is not going to be a Lone Ranger thing. With me, there's no way I could be doing what I'm doing right now without a host of people who are helping me on four continents. But when I first started this journey of faith, it was the Lord speaking to me, come follow me. And that's what he's saying to you tonight. Come follow me. Take the mikvah. Get a Bible. Find out what I want from you and do it. Lord, I want to pray right now that somebody will give an answer to the call. There's a call on their life. God has something he wants them to do. There's something they're supposed to guard. There's, there's, there's something. Uh, the first man was supposed to guard a garden. He didn't. He let the snake in. The snake talked to his wife, and that was the end of it. Uh, Noah was told to build an ark. He built it. Whatever it is we're supposed to do. Whatever God wants us to do. We must do it. And I thank you, Lord, for your salvation. Because without your salvation, we couldn't do anything. And even when we do these things, we're unworthy servants. Because you have to do it through us. It's really the Lord's work. It's not our work. Moshiach ben Dovid, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life. And I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life. And everybody said, Amen.